The next speaker, they call her the, I call her like the Medicare queen. Everybody else calls her the queen of the bundle. One of the things that has occurred to me in the last couple of weeks is how struggles can turn into successes. When you think about sales, almost anything you've ever done in your life has involved some type of selling. You all are educators. You are trying to show people a way to protect themselves. Everybody understands insurance is one of the necessities of our lives. However, it's not always the easiest thing for someone to buy into because their priorities are different than ours. So it's up to us to make them feel it. It doesn't matter if you work for someone or if you're an independent contractor or you're part of a career organization, you still own what you do. You are still responsible for your successes. The next speaker, they call her the, I call her like the Medicare queen. Everybody else calls her the queen of the bundle. She knows her stuff. She's been in the insurance industry for a long time. Super knowledgeable. She's hilarious. She's fun to be around, like at the VIP party in Dallas. I promise you, you want to take a second to meet this chick, Miss Galen Hendricks. I've gotten to know her a lot over the last several months. And I'm telling you, she, she is, she's awesome. She's fun. She is a high integrity, high work ethic, great with people. Everyone loves her. And I don't know how you wouldn't, okay? so. She's built an incredible company. Super excited to have you a part of this thing and I'm looking forward to spending a lot more time with you even in Dallas. Please welcome to the 8% Nation virtual stage, my good friend, Miss Galen Hendricks. Hello everybody, I hope you're having a great day. My name is Galen Hendricks. I am the uh, CEO of Senior Security Benefits and also one of the original founders. We are so excited to have been asked to be part of 8% Nation this year. Uh, we're coming to you guys uh, here from lovely Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, we know that a lot has changed in all of our lives, but thank goodness that we can work virtually and keep trucking along and being successful. One of the things that um, has occurred to me in the last couple of weeks while sitting here and thinking about what I would talk to you about at 8% Nation is how struggles can turn into successes. That's kind of the story of my life. Um, I think one of the reasons why I've asked to be a keynote speaker at 8% Nation. So I'm super excited to be with you guys today. And I'm excited to share with you some of my story and hopefully what you can expect in July. As most of you know, 8% um, Nation has been going on. This will be the third one. I didn't make it to the first one. I uh, made a surprise visit at the second one, and here I am uh, gonna be a keynote speaker on the third one, and I couldn't be more excited. You know, when you think about sales, almost anything you've ever done in your life has involved some type of selling. Well, my story is no different. I started out in the insurance business, believe it or not, it'll be 35 years this May. I like to tell everybody I am a 35 year overnight success. Um, but there's been a lot of struggles along the way. Uh, there's been a lot of what to do, a lot of what not to do. But most interestingly enough, uh, in the last couple of months, I got asked, because I'm a female CEO, if I would do a podcast on the uh, glass ceiling situation. And I really, at first, was like, sure, I'll do it. And then I got to thinking about it. I don't know that I've ever really had a glass ceiling. I don't know that there's ever been something that I didn't feel like I could do. And I think that's because I've had some amazing, amazing leadership, parenting, mentorship in this business. And that's what I've tried to do. I have tried to educate, 
I've tried to mentor people. And some days I sit there and think about what does CEO really stand for? And I don't believe it's chief executive officer. I really honestly believe it's chief educational officer. You guys every day and gals, I just use the word guys, but it's guys and gals. You all are educators. You are trying to show people a way to protect themselves. Almost everybody at 8% Nation that I know of is involved in some type of insurance. And that's even if you're in the real estate world. Everybody understands insurance is one of the necessities of our lives. However, it's not always the easiest thing for someone to buy into because their priorities are different than ours. So it's up to us to make them feel it, make them get it, make them understand why it's so important. Again, why you're the CEO of your business. It doesn't matter if you work for someone or if you're an independent contractor or you're part of a career organization, you still own what you do. You are still responsible for your successes. And so what I'd like to talk to you today is about how to turn those struggles into successes. So for me, going back to the glass ceiling conversation, when I went back and tried to figure out what had really gone on in my 35 years, there were some definite struggles. There were times when I really didn't think I could make it. But the good thing about 8% Nation and what we're gonna be talking to you guys about is you cannot fail if you don't quit. So it's up to you to keep pushing. Even when times get their toughest, if you are one of those women that may be having trouble with the glass ceiling, you know, there are so many people that will welcome you, welcome what you do. I have had the fortune of working with some of the greatest people in this business and primarily men. Men have been a big supporter of mine. Uh, some of my best students um, have encouraged me. Part of the reason I'm part of 8% Nation is because some of my really good friends introduced me to Cody Askins, and it wasn't within but a week that we discovered that Cody and I had a lot in common. Uh, we really like to help people, and that's what I've really figured out uh, sales is about. It's educating, it's helping. One of the biggest struggles you will find is once you become successful, you will have people in your corner cheering, your, cheering you on, excited about it, couldn't be happier for you. And then there's gonna be some people that end up becoming what we so commonly called as haters people that are kind of jealous that you kept pushing, kept moving, kept going when they didn't. There's three important times in my life where perseverance and not quitting proved to be incredibly fruitful and they were huge struggles, but they turned out to be incredibly huge successes. One was the standardization of Medicare. And you know, we're all still here. And you know, uh, our company is a leader in distribution of Medicare supplements. So I'm so glad I didn't get out of Medicare supplement business. Um, you go back and you think about the do not call list. When it came into our business, we could have easily said, I quit, but we didn't. We stayed in. A lot of other people left and we succeeded and we became a leader again. And then there was this little thing called Obamacare in 2010 that I'm sure you're very familiar with, but we stayed in. We didn't make money selling ACA plans, but we all of a sudden started seeing that we could show our clients one to four products in one call 
become a whole lot more efficient and our customers were much more protected. And guess what? Out of that came my new title, which was Queen of the Bundle. And I've been able to take that and educate large distributions and show them how such a negative situation turned into be an amazing gift. So what I wanna encourage you all to do is to keep persevering. Don't give up when it seems like it's dark. You know, when you think about what everybody's going on in the world today with, you know, there's over 13 million people that have filed unemployment. The folks in sales, we get to keep working. And some people say, yeah, but Galen, some of my clients are in that 13 million. And I would say to you, they need health insurance more now than they ever have before. Even though the government will tell you that they're gonna pay for the uninsured people, the problem with that is there's gonna be a huge line. Having health insurance is really, really important. I get asked all the time, Galen, what is it that you do? And I always say, I'm an insurance agent. I didn't dream my whole life to become an insurance agent. And matter of fact, like you, I probably had dreams of being a school teacher or a lawyer or a beauty pageant queen or whatever you wanna put there. But my father was a debit man. And that basically means he worked his tail off for very little money but he was an amazing provider for our family. And what he taught me in all of that is that sometimes people don't look out for themselves, so you have to look out for them. And sometimes that means making them incredibly uncomfortable, you being incredibly uncomfortable as the salesperson, but in the end, what you're planning on doing is getting that customer very comfortable. There's a lot of people out there that say the word I was taught by my very first boss at 17 years of age, not to say can't. She said, use any curse word you want, but don't use the word can't. And over time, I learned why. A lot of people will tell you that they can't when really what they mean to tell you is they won't. You have got to get that client understanding why what you're offering to them is so very important, not just to them, but to their family. When you offer insurance products or any product that you have to educate your client on, it's up to you to keep moving, to keep being that educator, to keep being that public servant, and know you're gonna have struggles Know you're gonna have people that aren't pulling for you like they once did. You will have issues that come up that will cause you severe indigestion, severe frustration. But what happens is, is after you get through it and you move through it and you get to see how you came out on the other side of that or when your client calls you and says, hey, my husband passed away. I need to figure out how to get that life insurance money. Just think about if you weren't that agent that got really uncomfortable with them originally and sold them that insurance product or that life insurance, how worse off their life would be. You know, I'm a big proponent of cancer insurance policies because of my personal story. You see, my dad was diagnosed with carcinoma of the stomach at 52 years of age. He was given six weeks to three years to live. He lived five weeks and five days. What killed my father was financial stress. Because he had life insurance, he knew that we would be taken care of, and he just wished the death would come sooner. With cancer policies, my customers get to have a living benefit because my hope is that when I show a client a product, they understand what that will do for them and their family. It's like a story that just happened to me recently with a client, not a client of mine, a client of someone else's. 
I serve as a director for the Ronald McDonald House here in Fort Worth, Texas, and she needed help getting a claim paid. I was able to call some friends at some insurance companies that have been very good friends, and they were able to move that along for her. She asked me what I did. I said I was an insurance agent. She said, what products do you offer? And I said, I have a cancer plan. I wished I would have gotten to you sooner, but here's what it does. If you're a client and you get a lump sum amount of money, you get to live off that money. You get to use it for treatment. You get to do whatever you want with it. And she said words that still pierce me to this day. And it makes me sad that I didn't get to her insurance agent before he sold her a plan. And what it simply was is this. She said, how come I don't know about those plans? It's up to us as salespeople to always educate our clients on the policies that we have. It's a struggle, but it will turn into success. My desire for each and every one of you who are watching this today is that you will be at 8% Nation along with me and a lot of my friends so that we can share together, become more successful together, hear your struggles, and give you some solutions. Instead of you sitting there figuring out how you're going to make this bill or that bill, it's up to us to show you how to make this sale or that sale so you will never have to worry about that bill again. I am so incredibly excited about getting to July. I know you are too. If there is anything I can ever do to help you, or if you need any assistance, I have a Facebook page called Queen of the Bundle. Go out there, like the page. I will be able to help you if I can, and I think I can, because don't remember, the word can't is not in my vocabulary, and it shouldn't be in yours either. I wish you happy days, happy sailing, and happy selling at the same time. Yes, with that Texas accent, sometimes sailing and selling sound the same, but remember, you will never get better as long as you are bitter, and your clients will always not be interested if you are not interesting. So I'm gonna sign off today with this. Remember, you cannot fail if you don't quit. Have a great day and so very excited about seeing you again at 8% Nation. Have a good one. Miss Galen, you go girl, awesome job. I told you she knew her stuff. I love her story. I love her passion for the industry specifically, and I'm excited to see her on stage in Dallas. Unbelievable job. Hey, if you love this video and you wanna learn how to attract more customers immediately, all right, the next video is right here. It's for you, click on there, and I'll see you over there. In the insurance industry, if people can reach out to you to do business with you, it's a lay down sell. Yeah, I think if you really understand the concept, the, the concept of being famous, right? I live outside of